Hello, this is John Murky, co-chair of ITI Planning Committee and employed by BioLife Professional IT Services, LLC, currently assigned to the VA's uh, My Healthy Vet pro program. Um, this presentation is going to be an overview of document sharing. So um, this is an overall uh, pictorial view of a uh, health information exchange using uh, the XDS uh, document sharing, cross enterprise document sharing profile. It's made up of a few central components, patient identity manager and a document registry. Um, the little silos uh, that are pointed to by document repositories represent the various document repositories and uh, those would typically be uh, distributed amongst the various uh, creators of content. Um, but there could be one of those centrally located as well. Architecture supports that. What the XDS environment is trying to do is provide a way to share documents among many different participants. So around the outside are those different participants primary care physicians, laboratories, public health, pharmacies, specialties, various hospitals, and uh, various payers, other uh, as well. And indeed, even the patient could be a participant within a, an exchange. This exchange, of course, requires some kinds of policies that uh, indicate who's uh, allowed to access, what kinds of purposes of use, what's the security model, um, the various uh, uh, service level agreements, and the various um, code systems and such. All of that, um, the uh, IHE XDS uh, calls the affinity domain. So they have some kind of an affinity, some reason to uh, group together. In this way, this uh, environment, the XDS environment, allows for a participant to publish a document into, the, into their document repository that gets advertised in their document registry. And the patients uh, that they see uh, are new patients or updating of de uh, demographics of an existing patient also then get sent in real time to the patient identity manager. At some point in time, uh, there's a reason for someone to go looking for documents. Um, that, uh, on the query side, would start with doing a patient uh, ID lookup. I have this ID in my uh, environment. What is the ID within this affinity domain? Once I have an ID, I then do document queries to the document registry and I get document entries, which are just metadata about the documents. But I'll explain that metadata later. The idea is if I look at the metadata, I can then determine which of those uh, document entries represent documents that I want to pull. I can then pull uh, or retrieve the documents from their various repositories and I now have the documents uh, in, in my hands. The general security model in this case is when a query comes in, the document registry has to determine whether that's a trustable uh, query uh, source. And uh, when a request for a document comes in, a document repository's custodian would need to indicate uh, whether it's authorized to re uh, uh, give the document out. Um, so it's uh, it's a rather simplistic based on you know, those three types of queries. A XDS environment is uh, potentially rather constrained when you talk about larger uh, regions such as states or nations or multiple nations. So there is a cross-community access profile, which is a way to federate queries amongst many uh, health information exchanges. So you see here, a query would come down from the top. This XCA gateway would 
uh, fan that query out to various uh, uh, communities, the results would be uh, combined back and uh, you know the combined result would be returned to that which was asking for the information. You'll notice at the bottom the XCA uh, gateway is talking to two different XDS environments using the previous slide, but it's also uh, in this case talking directly to an EHR. A difference uh, that XCA has is that it is not limited to just XDS environments, it can also uh, be supported by various uh, other kinds of systems like a PHR or an EHR that are willing to uh, support the three queries, for patient discovery, document discovery, and document retrieval. So in this way, um, it, it not only supports uh, the scale up uh, of multiple XDS, but also to uh, other kinds of, of uh, environments. You'll note the XCA environment does not support a publication. One is expected to publish only within your community. Once you've published within your community, you, you uh, can uh, receive federated queries through XCA. The next topic that is important to the uh, XDS or XCA environment is the concept of a document. A document is central to this kind of sharing, and uh, these principles are very critical to uh, success in this uh, cross-organizational kind of uh, queries and retrieves because um, these are, are, are cross-organizational and therefore um, it's very important to know, um, for example, that, there, that the object you're pulling has uh, you know, some concept of persistence. So if I pull it today and I pull it tomorrow, um, it is, will be unaltered. Um, it's going to be uh, available for a period of time. Um, and oftentimes, this document content will outlive the technology under which it was originally published. That is a long-term persistence. A principle of a document is also that it has some stewardship. So some custodian takes responsibility to maintain it for the lifetime, even when the technology changes. Uh, a document has the principle of being authenticatable. Uh, or otherwise known as potential for authentication. Um, it is made up of various parts uh, that have the intention of being legally authenticatable. Who wrote this? Why did they write it? Uh, is it complete? Has it uh, been changed incorrectly in the life? There's also the principle of the document having some context. What is the setting under which this information was uh, put into a document. Was it an episode of care? Was it an emergency room? Uh, was it a, a long-term uh, care context? So what's the context of the document? There's also this principle of wholeness. So when you look at a document, you can see that it is whole. It has all of the information in it that is necessary to understand the content that is in the document. And then lastly, there is this principle of being human readable. Now, some will argue that a CDA document is, is, is XML, and XML is really not very human readable. But the human readability in this case is uh, intended to mean that uh, through simple uh, transformations, it is human readable, or that there is some portion of it that is inherently human readable. That doesn't mean that there isn't uh, codable concepts in there that do not have a human readable mechanism. Another very important uh, concept within the XDS and XE environment is that the, uh, the environment is content agnostic. So it has this metadata, which you know we haven't yet talked about, uh, but we hinted at. That metadata describes the document. But it also uh, supports any kind of format or any kind of encoding. 
So yeah, CDA documents, CCDA, C32s, no problem. But also the new fire documents uh, that didn't even exist when XDS uh, was being invented. Fire documents absolutely can be managed within XDS. Uh, DICOM documents, PDF, text, graphics, uh, there's even some special on-demand or delayed assembly type documents. And as the diagram kind of shows, you can actually have a relationship, um, a parent to a child, in this case, uh, where potentially the CCDA 2.1 is the, uh, the piece that is authored, uh, and there are various transforms available for other uh, use cases where maybe uh, the, the, the retrieving system really wants it only in a PDF form. So what is this metadata? Well, metadata is data that describes data, in this case, that describes the document. Uh, the diagram is kind of intended to look like a VIN diagram, though it's not formally a VIN diagram. Um, because it's really just showing various kinds of use cases uh, for the uh, metadata elements, where actually some of the metadata elements appear in multiple places. Uh, but generally speaking, you know, there's uh, six or so uh, various reasons uh, that, that drive for why did we include that particular uh, element. Uh, things around life cycle. When was this document created? Who is the authenticator? Uh, privacy and security, what is confidentiality? Um, uh, what's the, you know, it's hash and size. Uh, when was it created? Where was it created? Provenance, who, what, where, when, why, you know, of this particular document. Uh, the patient identity, and in this case, the metadata supports um, the concept of what was the patient's identity at the time the document was created versus what is its patient's understanding of the identity today. Um, there is some technical exchange um, uh, information there that is dominantly just simply to enable the exchange of the data. Um, and then there's some descriptive things like the class code and the type codes and the titles and, and uh, you know, the uh, various authors and facility types. So um, this is uh, a representation of the various kinds of metadata and why one would uh, use a particular element or why does it exist. Um, further details, a breakdown of this is available in the IEG ITI Technical Framework Volume 3, where this diagram uh, exists and this concept uh, that I'm showing on this page is further uh, pulled apart and, and described and further uh, 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 diagrammed out. So XDS and XEA are the, the, the dominant profiles that I've talked about, but there's a lot of supporting infrastructure uh, that are also documented as profiles predominantly out of the ITI committee. Um, so for example, security and privacy. The ATNA audit trails and node authentication is a core uh, security module that ensures that uh, you only allow uh, trustable uh, entities into your network that you on every access, every request, every um, uh, action. XUA is a profile of SAML uh, that has uh, identified uh, elements within the SAML that would support things like purpose of use. Why are you asking for this data? Uh, what is your role? Who are you? Uh, what is the organization? Is there a consent on file that supports this? Um, consistent time, you know, there's a bunch of others here. There is the uh, digital signature content profile and the document encryption profile that um, support signatures across documents or enveloping and encrypting the document. And then there is uh, BPPC, patient basic patient privacy consents, and advanced 
patient private privacy consents to support privacy consent uh, records. Patient identity, we've talked about a little bit already. Provider identity uh, through various provider directories or uh, care service directories or personnel white pages. Um, and then there is uh, some other things like workflow. So cross enterprise document workflow is an infrastructure that supports uh, managing a workflow using a document. So when you have, um, for example, a care plan that is needs to coordinate many different organizations within um, an XDS environment to deal with a chronic care condition. And then of course, uh, you know, more and more and more detail. Um, I'm not going to go uh, into reading all of this, but you can see that there are various white papers. Uh, there's a brand new document sharing metadata handbook that helps an affinity domain or a community figure out how should they use all that metadata that I discussed. Um, there's some uh, deployment planning handbooks, uh, various code systems and uh, various other contents, including many CDA content profiles. So this has been the introduction to document sharing. I hope you uh, got the, the information you needed to find the uh, details that you need. Thank you.